and welcome. This is CEO Talk Show exclusively on VTV Channel, and I'm Thu Hương from Hanoi. Now, the ASEAN Economic Community, or AEC, will be established by the end of this year. Simply, the single market economy will be a real opportunity for 10 member states, while others are worried that AEC can be more of a threat. So in this series of CEO Talk Show, we'll be examining and analyzing the AEC, opportunities, challenges, and the way forward. Joining me today to discuss the issue is Mr. Stuart Dean, the Chief Executive of, uh, for ASEAN of the General Electric, or globally known as GE. Great. Welcome, I'm Stuart. Very happy to be here, Hung. Thank you for having me. Such a great pleasure to have you here. Before we start the talk, we'd like to give you a flashback of initiative for a common marketplace for ASEAN, the ASEAN economic community, more in the following business report. Ý tưởng về cộng đồng ASEAN lần đầu tiên được đề cập vào năm 1997, kỷ niệm 30 năm ngày thành lập ASEAN, lãnh đạo các nước ASEAN đã thông qua văn kiện quan trọng tầm nhìn ASEAN 2020 với mục tiêu đưa hiệp hội trở thành một nhóm hài hòa các dân tộc Đông Nam Á, gắn bó trong một cộng đồng các xã hội đùm bọc lẫn nhau. Năm 2007, một lần nữa, các nhà lãnh đạo nhấn mạnh lại cam kết này, đồng thời quyết định đẩy nhanh quá trình thành lập cộng đồng kinh tế ASEAN vào năm 2015. Đặc biệt, các nhà lãnh đạo ASEAN đã đồng ý rút ngắn tiến trình hội nhập kinh tế khu vực bằng việc thông qua kế hoạch hành động Cộng đồng Kinh tế ASEAN hay AEC và thành lập AEC vào năm 2015. Tại hội nghị cấp cao ASEAN lần thứ 21 năm 2012, các nhà lãnh đạo ASEAN đã quyết định thời điểm hình thành Cộng đồng ASEAN vào ngày 31 tháng 12 năm 2015 và các bước thực hiện đang được gấp rút tiến hành. Cộng đồng kinh tế ASEAN có mục đích tạo dựng một thị trường và cơ sở sản xuất thống nhất cho các quốc gia thành viên ASEAN, thúc đẩy dòng trung chuyển tự do của hàng hóa, dịch vụ, đầu tư, lao động có tay nghề trong ASEAN. Hàng rào thuế quan và hàng rào phi thuế quan sẽ từng bước bị xóa bỏ. Các nhà đầu tư ASEAN sẽ được tự do đầu tư vào tất cả mọi lĩnh vực trong khu vực. Các chuyên gia và lao động có tay nghề sẽ được luân chuyển tự do trong khu vực những thủ tục hải quan và thương mại khi đã được tiêu chuẩn hóa hài hòa và đơn giản hơn sẽ góp phần làm giảm chi phí giao dịch. Tôi thấy có một cái 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 tâm lý chung là thế này, cứ nghĩ rằng là sau ngày 31 tháng 12 năm 2015 khi cộng đồng ra đời thì mình ngủ dậy chắc là mọi thứ nó khác nhưng nó không phải. Cái quá trình để cộng đồng ASEAN ra đời nó đã diễn ra từ rất lâu rồi. Ví dụ như nói về mặt kinh tế là từ từ lâu rồi và các dòng thuế của chúng ta thì cũng đã cắt giảm và nó có rất là nhiều chương trình từ uh, thương mại uh, đầu tiên là thương mại uh, hàng hóa sau đấy là thương mại dịch vụ thế rồi tài sản trí tuệ rồi đầu tư rồi tất cả những cái hoạt động khác nó là một cái quá trình mục tiêu của AEC là thúc đẩy phát triển kinh tế một cách công bằng thiết lập khu vực kinh tế có năng lực cạnh tranh cao mà với năng lực cạnh tranh này ASEAN có thể hội nhập đầy đủ vào nền kinh tế toàn cầu economic pillar we will integrate more commercially, we can work together to have a single window of ASEAN in trade and facilitation of goods. Cộng đồng kinh tế ASEAN hướng tới mục tiêu tạo dựng một khu vực kinh tế có năng lực cạnh tranh cao, thịnh vượng và ổn định. Theo đó, khu vực này sẽ ưu tiên 6 yếu tố chủ chốt là chính sách cạnh tranh, bảo vệ người tiêu dùng, quyền sở hữu trí tuệ, phát triển cơ sở hạ tầng, hệ thống thuế khóa và thương mại điện tử với thị trường tương tác lẫn nhau và các ngành công nghiệp hội nhập. Có thể nói, ASEAN hiện đang hoạt động trong một môi trường toàn cầu hóa ngày càng cao. Do đó, không chỉ dừng lại ở AEC, mà ASEAN còn phải xem xét tất cả các quy định trên thế giới để hình thành chính sách cho chính mình, như chấp thuận các tiêu chuẩn và kinh nghiệm sản xuất, phân phối quốc tế tối ưu nhất. Đây sẽ là động lực chính cho phép ASEAN có thể cạnh tranh thành công với thị trường toàn cầu, đạt được mục đích sản xuất, trở thành nơi cung ứng quan trọng cho thị trường quốc tế, đồng thời đảm bảo thị trường ASEAN có sức hấp dẫn với các nhà đầu tư nước ngoài. Tuy nhiên, có thể nói, vì hình hành AEC sẽ đem đến nhiều cơ hội cũng như thách thức cho các công ty toàn cầu. The ASEAN Economic Community or AEC will take shape by the end of this year and it will aim to transform the region into an area with free movement of goods, services 
uh, capital and uh, skill labor force. So what chances do you see when the IEC comes true? I think you mentioned it before. I mean, it's both a great opportunity, uh, but as well as a, a threat. And I think any time there's a free trade agreement, uh, we've seen it in the United States with the North America Free Trade Agreement, it really increases the pressure on a country and the businesses in that country to become more competitive. Uh, and that's how consumers benefit, mm -hmm. right? The increasing competition causes uh, companies to produce products and services at lower costs and better quality in order to meet the needs of their customers. So uh, AEC is a tremendous opportunity. You know, this free trade area has actually been in place for more than 20 years, and the region has made really a lot of progress, mm -hmm. particularly in reducing tariffs on manufactured goods. I think what, uh, what I understand from AEC is taking it to the next level. Mm -hmm. So moving beyond just manufactured goods to services, capital markets, uh, and free flow of professional labor through the region. Uh, and I think it's timely, and I think the ASEAN region, which is the third largest free trade area in the world after North America and the EU, are really as well positioned to become uh, a very mature free trade area if they're able to continually make progress. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, as Vietnam is an integral part in the ASEAN community, so what chances can Vietnam enjoy from the IEC in 2015? Well, of course, uh, ASEAN is 10 countries, uh, about 650 million uh, population, a, a $4 trillion uh, GDP. So it's a big market. Sure. And uh, so every country has an opportunity to expand beyond its own borders to serve what is a larger market, get the economies of scale uh, that go along with that, and, and become much more globally uh, competitive and I think it's uh, you know a great place to launch global businesses uh, from ASEAN going forward. I think we see a lot of uh, companies that are already building strategies around the ASEAN region. You see a number of the banks uh, doing that. I see a number of the, the power companies uh, investing across borders, a number of the petrochemical companies investing across borders and they get big economies of scale. Uh, as a result of that. Um, I think the, uh, the important thing, though, as countries try to provide the right environment mm -hmm. to allow their businesses to grow, they need to focus on creating the right conditions in their countries to allow their companies to invest. And that means better infrastructure uh, than what we've had in the, in the past. Uh, it means better transparency, better governance, uh, so that businesses know what the rules are uh, and that those rules are going to be in place for you know, the long term mm -hmm. so that uh, businesses can make long-term investments uh, in that environment. So uh, great opportunity, but a lot of things need to happen to really fulfill mm -hmm. the, uh, the vision that these 10 countries have for the ASEAN economic community. Mm -hmm. That's the story for the 10 member states, but now can you specify the story for in Vietnamese case? What can we enjoy when the ASEAN economic community is formed? I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for Vietnam. We've, we've invested in Vietnam and we have found it to, to be a, you know, a great place for investment. Mm -hmm. the, the workforce, the workforces that we have in Haiphong, mm -hmm. Uh, and in Ho Chi Minh City are among some of the most productive workers anywhere in the world uh, for GE. Mm -hmm. we, we export from our Haiphong facility and uh, you know that's been a tremendous uh, investment uh, for us. So we know how competitive uh, Vietnam can be. So as you open up uh, the ASEAN markets to Vietnam, I think Vietnam's well positioned to, to compete very well. Uh, in that environment. I think, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, infrastructure still needs to be improved here. I think uh, policy making 
uh, needs to continue to become more and more transparent and to make sure those rules stay in place uh, for the long term uh, so that Vietnamese companies can build ASEAN strategies and, and know that uh, Vietnam is going to support those strategies going forward. Now, more than a century ago, uh, you decided to move out of the United States and have made a very strong presence here in ASEAN. Uh, what are the reasons for your movement and what are the major opportunities that you can see in the ASEAN market, particularly when the, the AEC come into shape? Yeah, um, you know, GE has been a global company for, uh, for a long time, more than, more than 100 years. We've always believed if we have the right products, whether it's the original Thomas Alva Edison light bulb or state-of-the-art gas turbines, mm -hmm. wind turbines, aircraft engines, diagnostic health care equipment, uh, locomotives, rail signaling, that if that's a great product for the United States, mm -hmm. it's likely also to be a great product when localized for other markets around the world. So that's always been a core GE philosophy. And so we've expanded globally throughout our history. I think we it started off as just selling products mm -hmm. uh, outside the United States. Now we're really designing, uh, marketing, and servicing products that are unique to the markets. Uh, where we do business like ASEAN uh, and like Vietnam. Uh, we still have a long way to go on that journey, uh, but I think we're making great progress. We've really strengthened our teams uh, throughout the world, including ASEAN. Uh, in almost all cases, those teams are led by uh, local leaders in those countries. Uh, certainly that's the case uh, here in Vietnam, and that makes us really a Vietnamese company in Vietnam, uh, Indonesian company in Indonesia, a Thai company uh, in Thailand. Uh, and so it's taking the advantages of both the global scale that we get in our manufacturing and supply chains, some of which happen to be in Vietnam, like our Haiphong wind mm -hmm. turbine plant, but also we're a local company. And so we know the market well, we know what our customers want, and we serve them locally mm -hmm. here. I see. That's the vision. I see. So every coin has two sides, and opportunities normally come with some threats. Uh, when the ASEAN economic and trade region come true, uh, what challenges can be foreseen for the 10 member states? First for the 10 member states, Vietnam, well, I including think, Vietnam. Sure. Um, I, you know, I think uh, I mentioned before, so Vietnam has an opportunity really to market and sell its products and services to the other nine. Uh, mm -hmm. ASEAN countries. Of course, mm -hmm. you know, the opposite side of the coin mm -hmm. there is the other nine also have an opportunity to serve a fast-growing uh, Vietnam market here. So that's really gets back to the point that everybody's game has to be lifted. It mm -hmm. becomes more competitive when customers have a lot more choices than they have had in the, in the past. And I think the keys to taking advantage of the opportunity of this bigger freer uh, market called uh, ASEAN Economic Community is having great infrastructure so companies can invest clear um, policies and rules and rule of law uh, that gives the companies assurance that when they make long-term investments uh, that, that those will stand the, the test of time. That's certainly what GE does when we look to invest. I will say Vietnam's well positioned here for that. I think we established our Haiphong facility about five years ago, mm -hmm. uh, and the government has met every commitment uh, that we had asked for when we started. Uh, and as a result, as I mentioned before, that's been a fantastic investment uh, for GE. Uh, we export almost 100% from that facility, but we'll also eventually use that facility to serve uh, the ASEAN economic community mm -hmm. And, and even Asia more broadly going mm -hmm. forward. I see. We talk about the challenges. Uh, there is, it is, has been observed in Vietnam that is the government is quite prompt and ready for the AEC. 
But at the same time, the business community, they seem to be in the opposite side. They, they show to be quite indifferent and they don't care much. They don't know much about the AEC. Uh, when this will become a big obstacle for Vietnam when it is heading toward the AEC? Yeah, I think that that could be a very big problem for Vietnam. And, and I think there probably needs to be more done to communicate uh, the benefits of ASEAN economic community as well as the threats if you, if you don't take it if you don't go after the opportunities, mm -hmm. right, it's, uh, it's going to be a threat. Um, I, th I think um, certainly uh, some Vietnamese uh, companies understand. I think Petro Vietnam is a global company. Uh, the airlines here are, are global companies are, and, and becoming more global. I think what we see throughout ASEAN is a lot of the smaller companies who are kind of happy selling into the domestic market. It's yeah. easy, it's lower risk, they speak the same language, same culture. Um, they, they don't, not, they're not quite ready to take on these a bigger challenge of moving across borders. But I think they need to change that mentality and because other people will start to look to come into Vietnam. So uh, you got to take advantage of the opportunity. And I think um, the, uh, the institutions, whether it's the government or um, other business associations, uh, chambers of commerce, uh, need to be working with Vietnamese companies to help them make that transition. Mm -hmm. It's a mindset change. Yeah. GE has invested globally and across the border, especially within the ASEAN markets. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any challenges for a conglomerate like GE when the IEC come true? I think uh, we see it more as an opportunity uh, than, a, than a threat. Mm -hmm. um, and the opportunity really is to, um, if, you, if you accept the premise that these countries, in order to take advantage of the AEC, need to have better infrastructure, you know, better ports, um, more um, supply of, of electricity, um, with higher reserve margins mm -hmm. that, than exist today, uh, better uh, mass transportation, uh, both for people as well as for freight, better air transportation, better airports. Uh, so as these countries invest in infrastructure to facilitate the ASEAN economic community, GE as an infrastructure company has mm -hmm. a huge opportunity uh, to help these countries achieve their vision for the AEC. So whether it's uh, aircraft engines for, uh, uh, for airplanes or power generation equipment or locomotives, freight locomotives, or healthcare, uh, there's enormous opportunities to serve the needs of the ASEAN economic community. Right. Perhaps uh, when we talk about the ASEAN economic community, uh, we should look beyond the birth of uh, the community this year. Because this year only opens the door into the community. Instead, we should look into ways to operationalize the community in the following years. So what should we do to uh, tap the potential of the ASEAN market and minimize the risk? I absolutely agree with you. I, I, I would say the, the easiest part has been lowering the yeah. tariffs mm -hmm. on manufactured goods, you know. But to fulfill the vision of the ASEAN economic community, a lot more needs to be done. And, and these are tougher areas. That's one of the reasons they've taken longer to be addressed. Uh, integration of capital markets um, and, and the free flow of money across border, um, that needs to be facilitated. Uh, much better than it is today. Um, certainly uh, services um, needs to be liberalized uh, much more so than it is today. Um, I think we'll see progress by the end of this year, but they won't be meeting the vision by the end of the year. So that's, it's a long-term uh, uh, commitment and uh, I'm confident you know, that, that will, they'll continually make progress. And I think that's the most important mm -hmm. thing because these are not easy things. There are dislocations that occur uh, over time in certain countries. So, I mean, one of the things I really like about 
ASEAN economic community and how ASEAN works is they build in flexibility for some of the less developed countries uh, and allow them to, to catch up, uh, have a little bit more time to address the dislocations that occur. Uh, but I, I think there needs to be a discipline also. And no progress should be unacceptable. No progress in any country is not acceptable. Uh, so I think there, there needs to be milestones along the way that the governments and the ASEAN Secretariat measure the countries at. There should be transparency about the progress that's being made. Uh, and when there's not enough progress, then someone needs to blow the whistle and say, mm -hmm. hey, let's you know, kind of see where we are and what, what do we need to do to get this back on track. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so uh, you have to talk about the issues of trade uh, barrier remo uh, removal and about the free flow of capital. What about the role of the government and also the private sector? What role should they take in the ASEAN economic community implementation? Yeah. Um, well, I think it's, it's critical that governments and the private sector work together to help address the opportunities and, and challenges that come along with the ASEAN Secretariat. As, as GE is an infrastructure company, you know, we're, we're most knowledgeable about infrastructure. We know that, you know, there's a, over the next 10 years, there's about $4 trillion mm -hmm. of infrastructure that the ASEAN countries need to build from, from there. And there is, not enough money in any of the governments uh, to be able to fund that. So uh, the private sector has to help with the financing of these projects. And I think the, uh, the infrastructure projects need private sector expertise and uh, their experience in order to build these uh, infrastructure projects cost effectively and making sure that they meet the, the objectives of, of the investments that are being made here. Uh, and so, uh, but you also want competition, right? So you don't want uh, businesses concluding, colluding. So um, the governments need to take the leadership role in terms of planning the infrastructure uh, that's going to be built, making sure they're procuring that infrastructure in a cost-effective and competitive way, uh, but also leveraging the latest technologies that are available uh, globally uh, to get the lowest possible cost and, and highest possible quality. You know, we've had experience with uh, so-called PPPs, mm -hmm. public-private partnerships, and they're not easy to do, but when you do them well, those really guarantee the best outcomes. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've seen that in the, in the uh, power generation sector, um, independent power projects are really a well-established uh, way to do PPPs. Uh, we've also seen some successful PPPs in the healthcare uh, sector. Um, and certainly the uh, commercial airline business is, is very open and, and uh, that's really a best example of, of where the other infrastructure areas will move longer term. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what we mean by the private sector also involved uh, such a multinational corporates like the GE, doesn't it? Sure. I, I mean, I think uh, global companies have a role to play, mm -hmm. but in reality, m most of the infrastructure will be bit built by ASEAN companies, um, either in partnership with global companies or, or on their own. Um, I don't know too many global companies that, that do roads mm -hmm. or rail. Um, uh, I mean, we global companies tend to be in the higher technology uh, aspects, you know, so company like GE would play in aviation, power generation, uh, where we're introducing technologies that provide the highest fuel efficiency for aircraft or uh, locomotives. Um, so it's, it's going to be, you need really all hands on deck. đã có mặt tại ASEAN từ tháng 4 năm 1890 khi còn mang tên Thomson, Hilton, Electric Company và kể từ đó phát triển mạnh mẽ tại khu vực ASEAN. Trải qua hơn một thế kỷ, đến nay, 
GE đã cung cấp mọi sản phẩm và dịch vụ của mình trong các lĩnh vực năng lượng, y tế, xử lý nước và gia thông vận tải, đồng thời cung cấp dịch vụ về tài chính và truyền thông trong khu vực. Hiện nay, GE đã có mặt tại hầu hết các nước ASEAN như Brunei, Campuchia, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, Thái Lan và Việt Nam. Có thể nói, GE đã trở thành một đối tác đóng góp mạnh mẽ vào sự phát triển của khu vực ASEAN, hỗ trợ xây dựng cơ sở hạ tầng và con người nơi đây. ASEAN cũng được xem là một thị trường chủ chốt của GE, đem lại 4,7 tỷ đô la Mỹ doanh thu trên 4 tỷ đơn hàng cơ sở hạ tầng. Trong bối cảnh, sự phát triển mạnh mẽ của tầng lớp trung lưu đang ngày càng có nhu cầu cao về cải thiện cơ sở hạ tầng và công tác quản lý. Ở Việt Nam, GE là một trong những công ty Mỹ đầu tiên được thành lập ngay cả trước khi lệnh cấm vận được dỡ bỏ khi GE mở văn phòng đại diện ở Hà Nội vào năm 1993. Ngày nay, công ty GE Việt Nam, một công ty đầu tư 100% vốn của GE, đang cung cấp các dịch vụ hậu mãi trong lĩnh vực thiết bị y tế, điện và năng lượng. Đầu tư của GE trong ngành năng lượng và một nhà máy ở Hải Phòng là một phần trong cam kết của GE với tư cách là một đối tác tăng trưởng ở Việt Nam. Năm 2010, GE đã xây dựng và đưa nhà máy sản xuất máy phát điện túc pin gió trị giá 61 triệu đô la Mỹ và hoạt động tại thành phố cảng Hải Phòng. Là nhà máy sản xuất đầu tiên có vốn đầu tư của GE tại Việt Nam, nhà máy có 600 nhân viên người Việt Nam và đã xuất khẩu hơn 1.000 hệ thống máy phát và các bộ phận cho túc pin gió, góp phần giải quyết các vấn đề năng lượng toàn cầu. Làm việc với máy phát điện chạy bằng sức gió là một trong những điều thực sự có ý nghĩa đối với tôi. Ấn tượng đầu tiên của tôi đối với máy phát điện chạy bằng sức gió là khả năng kiểm soát chất lượng một cách rất là nghiêm ngặt. Được làm việc trong một môi trường để cao chất lượng của sản phẩm, tôi cảm thấy công việc của mình thực sự có ý nghĩa. Năm 2012, Sở Kế hoạch và Đầu tư thành phố Hải Phòng đã cấp giấy chứng nhận đầu tư cho GE để mở rộng quy mô và danh mục sản xuất các thiết bị phát điện của GE trong 2 năm 2012 và 2013. Ngoài ra, GE đóng vai trò quan trọng trong việc phát triển một trong những dự án điện gió đầu tiên của Việt Nam ở tỉnh Bạc Liêu, đồng bằng sông Cửu Long, do công ty công lý làm chủ đầu tư. GE đã cung cấp 10 túc pin gió với tổng công suất 16 MW, đồng thời hỗ trợ vận hành và bảo trì thiết bị trong giai đoạn 1 của dự án điện gió Bạc Liêu. Dự án điện gió Bạc Liêu gồm có gì là 99 MW, chỉ ở thành 2 giai đoạn. Giai đoạn 1, 16 MW, còn lại 83 MW. Làm cái này để phát triển được là môi trường xanh, sạch, tạo điều kiện công an việc làm cho những người dân ở đây. Bên cạnh đó, lĩnh vực y tế cũng được GE đầu tư, nghiên cứu và phát triển. GE Healthcare gần đây thì đưa ra một cái kế hoạch, chúng tôi gọi nó là Healthy Imagination. Thì ba cái tiêu chí chính bao gồm các giảm chi phí tiêu thụ, tạo thêm điều kiện cho mọi người cùng được hưởng lợi, nâng cao cái khả năng hoạt động để có thể có được một cái nền y tế tốt hơn. Chúng tôi có một cái chương trình in country for country thì tức là trong Việt Nam và cho Việt Nam. Kế hoạch của chúng tôi sẽ là có một nhà máy sản xuất tại Việt Nam cho thị trường Việt Nam về lâu dài thì có thể là xuất khẩu để tham gia vào thị trường thế giới. Ngoài ra, Di còn tham gia vào nhiều lĩnh vực khác tại Việt Nam như hàng không, dầu khí. GE đang tiến hành hòa nhập và đổi mới tại Việt Nam và đang góp phần vào sự phát triển liên tục tại đây bằng cách chia sẻ những công nghệ phát triển và các tiêu chuẩn hoạt động tốt nhất thế giới với các đối tác tại Việt Nam. From uh, from that part of the aviation sector and co-locative, so can you tell in details how will GE support the ASEAN economic integration since 2015? Sure, um, you know I think the uh, First of all, we, we like to collaborate with governments. Mm -hmm. So we work hard to make sure that in every country in ASEAN, we work closely with the governments in those countries to understand what their needs are and to align our strategies to help meet the customer's visions. Um, and, and Vietnam is, and that's really one of our best examples in the ASEAN region where I think we've uh, been able to get access to the government, understand the vision that they have, and what they look for from a company like GE in terms of technology transfer, uh, localization in the country. And, and I think that has, uh, that's worked very well. And, uh, Haiphong, the wind turbine uh, generator uh, plant is a great example of that, which 
that and because of the good experience there, that led to an investment in an engineering center uh, in Ho Chi Minh City mm -hmm. for our oil and gas business, uh, which has 40 engineers now, um, eventually will uh, get to 100 engineers. So I think that's the key, good collaboration with, with the governments of ASEAN, understanding what they need and how GE can help. And certainly the other area we can help is in building world-class infrastructure. So, uh, as you said, GE is primarily an uh, infrastructure company. So, uh, what do you think, uh, what kind of uh, business of your area can benefit the most and can support ASEAN country the most during their integration process? Yeah, I think um, uh, over the last uh, two to three years, the business that has benefited the most uh, for us is the aviation mm -hmm. sector yeah. because that sector liberalized much earlier, uh, partially because there's very relatively little fixed assets that require changing. So you can, you buy planes and you have some decent airports and you can fly people everywhere around uh, the region. So that's been a, our fastest growing uh, business. But increasingly with the ASEAN uh, connectivity initiative um, that's connecting the electrical grids across ASEAN, transportation, land transportation uh, grids across ASEAN. We're seeing increasingly uh, cross investments in the hospital sectors here. So uh, this, these are areas that uh, GE can, can help with the integration process here, as well as consulting with governments to, to make sure that the right policies are in place to facilitate those kinds of uh, investments. You know, like other ASEAN countries, Vietnam is, is now hungry for infrastructure development. Mm -hmm. How will GE support the country in the process to build, build up its infrastructure? Well, the most important part of infrastructure building is making sure you're meeting the needs of the government of the country where you're building that infrastructure. So we work very hard to make sure we're aligned with uh, Vietnam's long-term um, vision for uh, their priorities uh, in the country. Um, our understanding is that uh, clearly uh, power generation, so um, power and water is a priority, uh, oil and gas yeah. to uh, generate some of the money, to invest in infrastructure is a priority, uh, aviation is a priority, and healthcare is a priority. So we've aligned our, our businesses and, and GE to help the government uh, develop its infrastructure across those areas and investing uh, as well uh, in the process. So in power and water, I talked a little bit about our investment in Haiphong, wind turbine generators, uh, which will um, help build out the renewable uh, uh, power opportunities in Vietnam. Vietnam is blessed with very good wind regimes here and of course wind does not generate any carbon emissions and so we're very, very proud to have uh, really built with a Vietnamese partner uh, the first uh, wind turbine uh, project, a sizable wind turbine project in the country. Of course we've also done gas turbine uh, plants, steam turbine plants uh, as well in the country. So that's power and water. Uh, oil and gas, uh, again, we've invested in oil and gas in our Vietnam Engineering Center uh, where we've hired 40 engineers to work on solutions to some of Vietnam's and the region's uh, engineering challenges uh, for some of these complex oil and gas uh, projects. Uh, then in the aviation, um, we're, uh, we're working very closely with uh, Vietnam Airlines and, and Vietjet. Uh, to help them connect the country uh, by uh, facilitating air travel both uh, inside the country and, and from uh, out, uh, Vietnam uh, outwards. Uh, and uh, we expect to do a lot more. We finance uh, many of the aircraft uh, that Vietnam Airlines uh, use today. Mm -hmm. uh, and then lastly, in, in health care, I think that is a huge need uh, going forward not only in Vietnam, but all developing countries. Uh, we've, uh, we're increasingly investing in 
um, very uh, easy to use, uh, mobile, battery operated, uh, internet uh, connectable devices that will allow diagnostic, uh, diagnosis to occur outside of urban areas. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, uh, Vietnam is um, huge rural populations, right? So we'll, we're introducing, uh, just for one example, a really cool handheld um, ultrasound uh, product with a with a tablet face, um, it should come in um, around three thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars. There'll be local language capability, and and even midwives and general practitioners who don't use that kind of equipment today, uh, we think will be able to be trained to use that equipment, and you'll be able to diagnose uh, many problems that have not ever been able to be diagnosed outside of big hospitals and big cities. So we're excited about all of these areas, and, uh, but most importantly, we're aligned with what the government of Vietnam wants to accomplish. So it's a great partnership. Mm -hmm. So we can be seen that uh, you focus on the four business sectors here in the country. But I, I believe that uh, with the increasing demand for infrastructure development in Vietnam in the future, GE will have more areas of business of interest that you can develop here in the country. Thank you. I hope so, too. Tập đoàn General Electric, GE, vừa được vinh danh là một trong 50 công ty có những cống hiến đáng kể vì cộng đồng tại Mỹ, theo bảng xếp hạng Civic 50 vừa được công bố trên Bloomberg ngày 8 tháng 12 vừa qua. Đây là năm thứ ba liên tiếp GE xuất hiện trong bảng xếp hạng danh giá này. Cam kết vì cộng đồng đang là một phần không thể thiếu trong chiến lược kinh doanh của nhiều công ty lớn trên toàn cầu. Trong đó, GE đang cống hiến thời gian và nguồn lực của mình để hỗ trợ cộng đồng, góp phần tạo ra những ảnh hưởng kinh doanh tích cực, gắn kết nhân viên và củng cố sự phát triển bền vững. Tại Việt Nam, hoạt động cộng đồng đã trở thành một phần trong văn hóa của GE trong hơn 20 năm có mặt tại thị trường này. Theo đó, thông qua các tổ chức như GE Volunteer, tổ chức tình nguyện GE, và GE Foundation, quỹ GE, tập đoàn GE đã đóng góp tích cực vào nhiều chương trình tình nguyện đa dạng, đem lại lợi ích cho cộng đồng như dự án làm sạch biển, quyền góp giúp đỡ cho các nạn nhân thảm họa thiên nhiên, sự kiện chiếu phim hàng năm cho trẻ mồ côi tại Hà Nội và thành phố Hồ Chí Minh, hiến máu nhân đạo, phối hợp cùng tổ chức Orbis, khám mắt và tài trợ phẫu thuật mắt miễn phí cho trẻ em nghèo, tham gia ngày hoạt động cộng đồng toàn cầu với nhiều hoạt động tình nguyện thiết thực trong các lĩnh vực được chú trọng như giáo dục, y tế, môi trường và phát triển cộng đồng. Gần đây nhất, trong tháng 8 năm 2014, GE Việt Nam đã tổ chức một loạt các hoạt động trong chương trình Ngày Hoạt động Cộng đồng Toàn cầu nhằm nâng cao ý thức về môi trường và hỗ trợ những người kém may mắn trên khắp cả nước. Trong khi đó, các tình nguyện viên GE cũng kết hợp với câu lạc bộ sinh viên tình nguyện GE gồm các sinh viên ưu tú được nhận học bổng G Foundation Scholar Leaders đã tổ chức quyên góp và trao tặng các em học sinh đồ dùng học tập thiết yếu trong một năm học mới. Cũng trong loạt sự kiện này, các nhân viên của công ty GE đã tổ chức hiến máu nhân đạo nhằm hỗ trợ những bệnh nhân đang gặp khó khăn. As the chief executive of ASEAN for GE, uh, for GE in ASEAN country, country, so can you share your plan for the Vietnamese market in the future? Yeah. Um, well, we're excited about Vietnam. It's uh, one of the fastest growing uh, countries, if not the fastest growing country in ASEAN. I talked about the uh, very positive experiences that we've had with our workforce uh, here in Vietnam. Um, you know, we, we normally measure our, our operations uh, by how competitive they are, and, and we measure how competitive they are by whether they can export or not. And our Vietnamese uh, operations have done a great job of, of exporting, which means they're globally competitive. So they're not just competitive within Vietnam, mm -hmm. not just competitive within ASEAN, but globally uh, competitive. Uh, so. We want every operation that we have throughout all of ASEAN, we have about 12 uh, operations, we want all of them to be globally competitive because mm -hmm. that's the best insurance that you'll have to survive these changes that we see every day in the, in the markets around the world.
Mm. But I hope Vietnam is prioritized in your global operation. It is indeed. I promise mm -hmm. you that. All right. Okay, so can you visualize the ASEAN economic community given that the uh, implementation process is successful and conducted in the right way? How would you visualize the Yeah, I, I think you, if you look at some of the big markets today, and since I'm American, you know, I'll talk to the United States. You know, United States, you can ship products, whether they're made in New York or California, and ship them anywhere mm -hmm. uh, inside the United States. You can set up service networks that cross borders smoothly, as if there were not any borders. You, people move, you know, depending on job opportunities uh, across borders. It's, it's basically an integrated market. So that's the, that's the vision, that's the long-term vision, I think, for, for ASEAN. Um, you know, U.S. population's uh, significantly smaller than the ASEAN population. And, and with the exception of Hawaii, we don't have islands like, <laughs> like a large part of ASEAN. So there, there, for sure there's uh, more challenges in ASEAN. But I think if you think 25, 35 years out, it ought to look more like an integrated market like the United States than it does today. And I think that's what people should keep in mind as they think about what are the advantages of this integration process. Mm -hmm. So uh, what about the uh, development of Vietnam in the ASEAN economic community? What, what do you visualize about Vietnam? I think this is a huge opportunity for Vietnam. You know, I read that uh, by the end of last year, Vietnam had become the largest exporter within ASEAN to the United States. Yeah, it's true that we are very strong on export and FDI as well in yeah. the past year. Which demonstrates how competitive that uh, the Vietnam economy can be. Uh, you know, you think of all the other exporting countries within ASEAN and how much longer they've been exporting to the United States. For Vietnam to pass them in the last, in, the, in a fairly short period of time of 25 years is phenomenal. It's, it really is phenomenal, and uh, you know, a pat on the back to both the Vietnamese government and, and the businesses that have uh, achieved that. And I think it's still at the beginning. You know, I think still many opportunities. So there's no reason why they can't be as effective selling into the ASEAN economic community. I'm very bullish on uh, Vietnam's opportunities. Regarding the ASEAN economic community, the threats are there, but also opportunities are very huge. So I think if we do it in the right way, the AEC can facilitate very well to foster economic growth and accommodate the expansion of 10 member states in the region, isn't it? I agree. I thank you so nice much suffering. for joining our program today. Thank you. Thank you. GE, with its infrastructure support and investment, we doubtlessly place in a significant role as AEC is fully operational. And that's all we have time for. Thank you so much for your time with us. Check out on our website at www.vitv.vn and join us for more CEO Talk Show next time. Till then, bye-bye.